just going to give you a quick tour of the latest project, a 1973 high top bus. Pretty sweet. It's in great condition. Anyway, we just put a 95 Subaru Legacy 2.2 into it. And uh, as you can see, there are no engine bay radiators. Um, we actually did a uh, belly mount this time. But I just want to uh, go over the engine configuration real quick here. Airbox, obviously. Uh, the stocked ducting, the uh, throttle body reverser, uh, which uses the stock. Um, Subaru cable, throttle cable. We used a, um, yeah, let's check out this side. The uh, KEP exhaust header and the uh, the Busseru engine cross member. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and post a, a link of all the the parts used for the radiator system. But this is just a uh, inline fill cap for um, that you can get at Summit or Jegs. And um, go ahead and take a look at some other stuff here. Here's a view of the uh, belly mount radiator. I have a little shroud here to um, basically divert airflow. Has a uh, wire mesh guard and a little deflector here to create some negative airflow uh, right back in here, which will then pull up and out. So from this angle, you can see up into where we have the fans, and those are just Subaru fans, and we have the um, basically the inlet here. The outlet is that guy over there, and he uh, is on the front of the radiator. We have a 22-pound radiator cap, and the hoses then go into the air duct the original heater air ducting and it's gonna be hard to see but you might be able to see it exiting right here and then that goes up to the thermostat and the other side just does the same thing I thought I would show the ground clearance here as you can see, it doesn't doesn't hang down too low on the belly mount radiator. This is where the uh, computer sits in the 73 high top. We have um, the main harness, all of the relays, the OBD2 reader, um, fuse panels. There's the heater, and it's just a uh, Summit or Jegs unit, 30,000 BTU, I believe. I thought I'd show you what I did for the cooling system. Um, just a quick diagram here. We'll start at the radiator side and uh, move up. So this is just a uh, 1985 Dodge pickup radiator. I think it's a D150 model, if I believe right. But that's the part number for this radiator. And so on this side and this side here, we have a Napa hose, part number 9128. And I just cut that in half and used both halves there to create 90 degree bends. This right here is a length of EMT galvanized steel conduit. That's a common thing that I use. And this is also a chunk of that inch and a quarter galvanized steel. This is a uh, 20 pound radiator cap. Um, it ranges 18 to 22 pounds, and that's the gates part number there. And then if we uh, come up here, we can see that this is the uh, stock uh, bus Y pipe. And so I like to run them through there, the uh, flexible um, hoses this is just an inch and a quarter by 41 inches so these are really long and they can snake right through the existing um, y pipe 
and there's the gates part number there. And then we have a little bit more uh, inch and a quarter EMT here just to join this hose which goes to the thermostat and this hose which also has the inline filler as well as the 16 pound radiator cap and so this guy is actually cut in half as well and there's the part number there and getting back here these are just the stock Subaru radiator fans now these have plastic shrouds, so you can cut them pretty easy. I wouldn't use the met the ones with metal shrouds, just because they'd be really hard to uh, cut and make work right. This little pipe right here has a bend in it, so you need to be able to bend that, or just get a radiator hose that has like this bend in it, and then you can use a straight shot. And this guy could potentially impact these fans. But, so you need to keep an eye on uh, distances here, otherwise your fans will clip that. So this needs to be tucked up nice and tight. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.